Hi guys, Pete Turner here and welcome to the first in this vlog series. So if you're watching this, the likeliness is you know me for being a mind reader or a mentalist. And if you don't know me or you don't know what a mentalist is, a mentalist is essentially somebody who cracks into the craniums of creatures from different cultures. And that's probably a ridiculous way to describe what it is that we do, but I think it's very apt. And the reason that it's very apt is because I'm in a very fortunate position. I get to travel to a, an array of different countries for a variety of different reasons. And whilst I'm in those countries, I experience the most incredible of things. And when I come back home to tell the people, that, you know, my friends, family, and other people that don't travel, I think they think they're tall tales. So I thought I'd kill two birds with one stone and share with you some of those memories so that you can see what I experience whilst I'm on my travels. So last week I was in St. Vincent, Italy, and this is exactly what it looked like. So I wanna to talk today about four things. The first being the secret behind being booked for lectures, conventions, and workshops. The second, I wanna share with you a life-changing experience. The third, I wanna talk about a few friends that I made during my stay in Italy, and the fourth, and last, I wanna share with you a metaphor. A metaphor that popped up during my stay in Italy that I think you'll take something away from. So the first thing that I wanna share is the secret behind being booked for lectures, conventions, workshops, and public speaking. Now, I'm gonna be really honest, the piece of advice that I'm about to give, um, I don't necessarily subscribe to, but the reason that I don't is because this almost manifested on its own for me. But I have learned during that journey what it is that you need to be able to in order to be able to be booked for similar conventions. So the first thing is that you need content. What are you gonna talk about? What's your gift? It's important that you have content, at least two and a half hours. Now there's a reason that you need two hours and 30 minutes worth of content because the very first set of lectures that you ever give, you're gonna rush through. I'm gonna be honest, you're gonna talk so quickly that if you had just an hour and 30 minutes of content, you'd probably run out in about 30 minutes. And that's a fact. So record yourself a five minute video that says who you are, what it is that you do, what it is that you have to offer the club. Find out who puts these lectures and conventions on and talk to that person. We could talk to celebrities on Twitter these days. We can get the attention of Donald Trump on Twitter. Find somebody who's been to the club and say to them, I'm looking at giving my first lecture and I wondered what you think would be an all right price for me, being somebody who's never lectured before, to ask and ask a few people. And then what you do is you make a mean mode and range and just go for the middle number and offer the club that number. If you really don't think that you should be charging, then don't charge. Just send your five minute video to the person that runs that club and let them watch it and tell them that you'd love to go there and give a talk or a workshop based on what it is that you're doing and how it's gonna be beneficial for their members. If they don't get back to you, that's fine. Move on to the next person. I'm gonna tell you something. I sent uh, a well-known magic company, I'm not gonna name them, one of my products probably seven or eight years ago. And this is before anybody really knew who it was that I am now, before anybody knew me as a, a mentalist or a mind reader. I sent them a product and I got a reply back saying, well, this is not really something that we're interested in at this time. And they were very polite, but basically what they were saying is, it's shit, we don't wanna work with it. But that same company, seven years later, then saw the effect perform live and wanted to buy the rights off me. So there's a lot of little clubs out there and let one of them give you an opportunity or a chance to record where it is that you do and then go make a, a video at that lecture. Pick out the best moments in that video. Have somebody cut it together for you. Spend maybe a couple of hundred pounds having somebody that you know that's local with a camera or if you've got a friend that'll do it for free, 
cut you together a video so then you can send that to clubs and then people will start to get in contact with you and the ball's already rolling. So that's the honest answer. You've got to let people know you are, but let the right people know you are. Know who it is that you're talking to. Because if you don't, it's a spectacular waste of time. You know, if I wanted to sell video games, I created the, the most amazing video game, I boxed it, packaged it, take it into a store that sells refreshment drinks, they're not gonna purchase it. And the reason they're not gonna purchase it is because that's not what they sell. They're not interested in that. So you've got to think, what's your audience? And once you know what your audience is, take what I've just told you and then sell your product. I wanna talk about how I got to Masters of Magic. So I'm trolling through uh, my email and I come across an email that says, we cordially invite you to the Masters of Magic. And I thought, wow, what's this? So I opened it up, I had a look at it. They asked me if I could come give a lecture and a workshop and uh, a talk and give a show. And of course I obliged. They flew me out from Manchester to Paris, from Paris to Torino. And then I had to travel for about an hour and a half. They had a driver come and pick me up through this incredible terrain, just mountains and you know waterfalls cascading out the side of hills. And I got got to the hotel and the hotel were like something out of a Disney movie with this big huge building that was sat on top of a mountain. In fact, let me show you what it looked like because it was so surreal. You wouldn't believe it if I tried to describe it. So here it is. Come here and visit my world. Come here and visit my world. Did history shining stars. Our love is the only way. Get lost cause I'm waiting Summer feelings are waiting boy there were a few things that happened during the course of my stay in Italy that made me completely reflect upon who it is that I am and you know what it is that I do. So I'm gonna be really personal for a few seconds to let you know how I feel before I travel so you can get an insight into my head. Before I travel, one, two days before I leave, my, my family are the only people that know this, but I'm so depressed about going, I get so down. In my head, I feel like I'm trapped, I'm torn between two worlds because although I love traveling and I love performing and I love lecturing and I love speaking and jamming and meeting new people, I miss the most amazing moments from being at home. You know, once I went away and my dog was this big and I got back and it was huge. I missed them, the dog growing, my son, I miss the most fundamental moments in my son's life. I don't get to share and experience the stuff that most people get. And I know there's a saying, the grass is always greener on the other side. And I'm not saying that I don't love it when I do travel because I, I really do. But I just get down. I think I trick myself in my head to feel ill and I don't want to go. I never want to leave. And it's a mission to get me out the door. And once I'm up in the air, I sort of reflect upon things a bit. I land and then everything's all right. And I know it's only for a short period and I come back and then I'm off somewhere else. And it grates me, it really wears me down. I never thought I'd ever escape that feeling. I never thought I'd ever get away from feeling like that. And I'll never completely eradicate that feeling. But I met somebody during my stay in Italy that's entirely made me realize just how important we are as people and how important it is what we do. And I met a little boy named Victor. And uh, Victor, as a baby, he got cancer. And he came up to me and he asked me for a photograph. And his mum showed me the picture on the phone. And I, you know, I put my arm around him. And I got a photograph with Victoria and she told me his story and she said that she felt that magic and mentalism was a thing that completely helped him to get through it. You know, it helped him, he just loves it more than anything else. It helped him 100% get over that and, and if it hadn't have been for that, she didn't think that he'd have made it. And to know that there's people like that that come to the lectures and there's people like that that come to the shows that look up to us like that, I realise that we're much more than just people who perform tricks. We're much more than just people who entertain people. You know, for the people out there, we are the sorts of people that, you know, we, we, we are as inspiring as the things that inspire us. Seeing this incredible kid overcome so much and come out the other side and knowing it's because of what we do and, and the things that we share entirely made me realize that I can't be as selfish to think that my world's so important that I need to be here all the time, you know, and that, that I'm missing out on the most fundamental things because the honesty is, you know, we, we share a small part of ourselves and, uh, and knowing that there's people like that that are there to watch and knowing that there's people like that that care so much, it really doesn't make me feel so bad about going because if I can help somebody in that way, of course I would, what human being wouldn't? So it entirely made me change my perspective on things and for all the magicians out there and mentalists that are watching this that are maybe creators, performers, lecturers, 
use that as your motivation. Use that as your motivation to get out there and go and share what it is that you do because you ultimately inspire hundreds if not thousands of people to be better people. So I want to finish on a metaphor, something that happened to me during my trip in Italy. I met three amazing guys, Eugenio, Gabe or Gabriel and Bo. Now Eugenio and Gabe are from Italy, Bo is from America but now lives in Germany. So he travels a lot, he has a militant background. But these guys are absolutely incredible guys. We're at the convention and I said they had a, a Fiat 500. We also met a guy called Nicholas, uh, who's a character, I'll tell you more about him later. But he had a Fiat 500 and I said, who fancies a trip to Mont Blanc? And straight away these guys said, yeah, let's do it. So we drove up to this castle before we went to Mont Blanc. It was so warm up there. And uh, the castle that you saw in the video at the introduction were fine, you know, but everything were trying to stop us from getting there. Everything were trying to stop us from getting to this castle. We had to drive over a field. We went to a farmer and said, which way is the road to get to the castle? And he said, the road's not open anymore. It's closed. So we had to look for an alternative route. And because the road bowed round, we literally cut across a field. There were cows in the field and Gabe was just like, oh, we'll just do it. We got stuck on a hill. We had to dig the car out and push it up. You saw that in the video. We had to push it to the top of the hill. But when we got to the top, you know, there were this amazing view and all of it were worth it. And I think that were a metaphor for things that were to come because we got to the castle, we filmed, we had an amazing time up there, sat, we could see the hotel from where we were, miles and miles away. We then jumped back in the car, we picked Nicholas up in his car and we drove over to Mont Blanc. And when we got to Mont Blanc, we were gonna get into the ski link and we were gonna get into the ski link, travel so we could see all the mountains and the people skiing and stuff like that. And that was the original plan. We get to the base of Mont Blanc, the ski link's closed. We can't travel on the ski link. So we drive up into the village in the mountains and we get told that we're only gonna be able to get about 400, 500 foot from the ground up. And so we got 500 foot up and there's barriers. There's two concrete slabs and a chain in between and we can't get past. So we messed around for about 10, 15 minutes in this area and we decided that we're not gonna let it stop us. We're not gonna let it stop us. We drove for two hours to get there. We drove for two hours and that's all we wanted to do. We left the convention midday to travel out and take a day out to go to the top of this mountain and document it. And we weren't giving up. So the guys got lock pick kits out and tried to pick the padlock off of the barrier. Now we probably shouldn't have done that, but when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. There was this problem presented and we tried to solve it. You know, we tried to pick the locks. And after about 10 minutes of realizing these locks are just not gonna be picked, I had a brainwave. We're gonna tie the tow ropes to the chains and we're gonna pull the fucking blocks out of the way and we're going up that mountain. So we got the cars ready, two little Fiat 500s, the two that you saw in the intro video clip. We tied the tow ropes to the concrete slabs and we drove and the wheels were spinning. So we grabbed hold of the blocks and we were pulling them as well. And once we'd moved the block, they were so easy to move by hand. So we grabbed hold of them and we pulled, <laughs> we pulled them aside. They slid along the ground. We made enough room to get the cars back through and then we towed them back close. So if anybody else came up behind us, there's no way that they'd know we ever went into the mountains. So we got these two cars and we're driving and we drove for what seemed like probably 45 minutes to an hour but as we're going up the mountain there's sheer rock face and a drop it doesn't look like i'm so far down where i'm filming but the honesty is that where the cars were going up there's me and then there's a drop off the side of me that goes even further down and the cars run out of space and we got stuck at the top of a mountain so we get out and to add insult to injury we had this guy called nicholas with us a lovely guy you know amazing character strange personality he's just like midrin so midrin if you're watching this he's exactly like you i think you know him as well um we convinced this guy that there were mountain lions so every two seconds a guy is looking around for mountain lions all of us are laughing because he's the only one that's not in on this job and he doesn't understand he's like he's like he genuinely to this day and if you're watching this video nicholas we apologize but there was no mountain lions we lied we told you a lie we got up the mountain we stuck beers in the side of the mountain and we just sat and talked for what seemed like an attorney we just talked about life we jammed mentalism on the top of a mountain looking down on the world and we finished by having a cold beer 